What is up, everybody? Today, we're going to be breaking down a 2.5 KD gameplay where I'm going to be giving you guys professional tips, lessons, and basically coaching and pointing out stuff he does well and stuff he could have done better. If you don't know who I am, I'm a two-time world champion, a former Call of Duty professional, and I've basically devoted my life to Warzone and Rebirth slash Fortune's Keep. I have about a 5 plus KD. Right off the bat, you obviously want to go for a play and a weapon. Kind of common sense, but that's the first thing you should be hunting for, not really money or anything else, because you need to be able to fight and you need to be able to have a uh, even level playing field you know you want to have be fully plated so he's going to get his loadout right away drops his plates and grabs more plates something super small it's been in the game forever but the play box is going to fully play you up so if you want to be extra with it you could drop your plates leave some extra or if any teammates need them and it's fully played up yourself so right here he sees the bounties to his left he obviously knows people are nearby um, he's going to break the door, and as soon as he's, he's in the same vicinity as potentially the opponent, he's going to pop a priest stem here. Now, popping a priest stem just gives you that extra speed boost, so if you do get an engagement within the next two seconds, you can use that extra boost of movement speed to really finesse, or if anything, do this, hunt them down. So he spots them, he has that extra speed boost, so he's f chasing them really far, and he's able to kind of catch up with him. So he's here, he's chasing a bounty, he knows he's obviously nearby. I like this little long slide he does here. Sometimes people are going to cut the slide kind of quickly, but you see he does these long slides. And right here, he's going to get some shots. And instead of just kind of like a, a quick slide, he does a long slide down the stairs. Now, if you don't know this, usually downstairs, the slopes, ramps, when you slide, it gives you more momentum. And it basically slides them wide, and then he slide cancels it back up and gets the kill. And obviously finishes with a throwing knife. You know, so two guys are at the buy. So initially, he's ready. He's playing it really well, right? He's playing. He's using the moving mechanics well. He's using his tacticals well. He's, you know, his in-game awareness is good. He's going to randomly get in a gunfight here. Nice shots. Again, backs off the plate up. You know, as soon as you get that kill, hey, where are these guys? They're, okay, there's one there, one there. Let me replay, regain my health, and then you go back. And I love the fact that something super small, but like, he doesn't just plate up and, you know, hide in a corner. Or just run away deeply. You know, he plates up, but as he's plating up, he's progressively moving slowly to the next target, and he just doesn't waste any time. So that's something, that, you know, really good players or higher KD players do. Um, I like this pre-stem again. He uses the stem for the movement. Now you're thinking, hey, app, like, why? what's the point of the stim? You know, it's not really going to give him health. He basically has full health. All he did was lose his plates. But it's all about that movement speed boost. You're allowed to break your enemy's cameras. So he immediately sees them, hugs the right, knowing the enemy won't be able to get a line of sight here, immediately pops the stim. No hesitation, because you need to be fast with these decision makings in this situation. Like, strafes left, because he knows he can't just run through the door. He strafes left. And now, and now he's going to slide, try to slide past his opponent, even slide into him, which is going to make his opponent have to, you know, recenter, resnap, and it just allows him to get the kill, especially with a gun like Blixen up close. Again, just reload, played up. So he, hear, he hears footsteps here. He's going to be able to snap on. Ooh, never mind. That guy just caught the best of him and his ed enemy is here. Now, this is one of those situations where it's not much he could have done differently. The one little thing I would say, if you know, you're trying to point out mistakes he could have done differently, instead of fully committing to the slide out, uh, he could actually sit in this doorway, maybe look for a second here, one or two seconds, spots this guy, and then starts putting, pulls out the NZ41, starts shooting him, and gives himself a chance where he, he can disengage, he can get in cover, he can run away. But as soon as he fully commits to this, he's out in the open. He has no way to run away. He has no way to finesse. If this is the only guy, he, maybe he can kill him and run away. But like, it's not the case either way because someone comes in. I think the guy he killed earlier comes in and is even behind him either way. So something super small. Whenever you're regaining, obviously you want to go for a loadout drop. If loadout drop is you know compromised, you want to go for you where you previously died. If that's chalk, then you want to go for somebody you killed that potentially had loadout guns already. And if that's chalk, then you do what he does. And there's multiple things you got to be thinking about. He gets the NZ41, metal loadout out. Uh, hits Serpentine to save this guy. He's going to chase him down. Good centering, good shots. So stims, essentially, on top of giving that little speed boost, they reset your sprint timer, okay? So, like, let's say with double time, I think it's about five seconds sprint time, like full tactical sprint. And without it, it's about a 2.5 seconds. So it's about half. So a good way to view this is, like, when you're initially sprinting, you want to sprint for about two seconds before using the stim to get like the full effect of the stim, if that makes sense. Usually using it early is if you're really trying to hunt down somebody. For for instance, this wasn't a worse situation. Like he kind of wanted to rush it. He wanted to get he wanted to get he wanted to get it to this guy closer. That's fine. I'm just trying to give you guys some more insight on it and trying to break it down to help you guys understand that you don't always have to rush the stim. You know, utilize the fact that you know you can hit that tactical sprint for about two seconds, two seconds and a half. But I would say about two seconds. So sprint for like one, two, and then pop the stim. That way you really get the full effect of it. 
So he's going to zip at a perfect time or almost. Um, I like that stim just to heal just in case that guy shoots him with a pistol. Um, kind of a, a, some lucky, some luck involved, but also some good shots and just, you know, gets the job done there. Catches this guy zipping up. Easy kill. Throwing out for the finish. Spots the three down there. Gets the plates. Needs the plates. Uh, something super small. Even buying a streak there. He, there's plates around. There's a lot of boxes here. He can definitely find plates, most likely. I'm even getting a streak to potentially push that team lighthouse. But the lighthouse push is like one of the worst in the game. One guy drops to the left. He's gonna, he knows that guy's potentially going for the loadout. Because one, it's probably the same skin he just killed. And two, the loadout's obviously there. So you connect the dots. You know, this is where people think people hack. You know, his, his in-game awareness is just... You know, it's it's like common sense, but like you people even like at a lower level don't really think about these things. But like it's at the same time, people need to understand that if you're kind of lost why he did that. Well, one, there's loadouts in the vicinity. It's in the loadouts in the area. That guy's probably gonna go for a loadout. So always remember that um, he's going to get some nice shots on here. Go for I, I like I like this. I like this really this technique right here. What he just did. And I do this a lot. So let's break this down very quickly. I don't want to waste too much time on this. So he obviously knows there's people potentially down here. He goes for a jump shot. Nice shots on this guy. The Blixen just takes care of business. Uh, he sees the second guy. So he's not going to fully... If you just stay there and try to re-snap on the second guy, one, that's going to take time. Two, you're just kind of a sitting duck. So he's going to disengage immediately afterwards. He gets the first, first knock, which is, you know, good play. <laughs> he's going to strafe wide left here. He's going to hit him with some shots. And he's not going to hesitate. Immediately back to the right. And he's going to catch... Basically breaks his, uh, this, this guy's ankles. And it's just very hard to counter that type of movement and, um, you know, shot like... The only thing that guy could have done play better is like kind of played for it. But unless you're like a really good player, it's hard to counter that type of play. So like it's just really good uh, movement and, you know, gun skill from him. Uh, you definitely got to utilize, again, the cameras, the peekers advantage. Again, he spots this guy. He's just going to stem to chase him down. A uh, little team wipe here. So people always ask me all the time, like, Apathy, what, what is the difference between a 2.5 and a 4 and a 5 KD? Or why, why, like, how do I get to a 5? And a lot of it's like a little bit more gun skill, but more so a lot of it is just like repositioning positioning you know making really good plays especially in those team fights um i think that's where it really makes a difference so he kills that guy up top i think he probably pinged down here or his teammates are fighting down here so he's just going to come down with them as well um again just nice little camera camera slide cancel very simple you know simple basics but he gets the kill with the slide cancel um the blixen is insane so rebirth is disable He's going to pop a stim to wrap left. I feel like it's kind of a waste of a stim. There's only five people left or four people left, not including his team. He's currently looking for this guy. Um, I would like to see him take the high ground here, which I'm pretty sure he does. Yep, get the high ground here. Spots the guy. Something super, super small, like super duper small. Um, <laughs> It's like being a little nitpicky, but just like being on top of things. Like it's the little things. Like, right here, as soon as he jumps up and he knows there's potentially a guy in this area over here in front of him, instead of having his Blixen out, immediately pull out the NZ-41. It doesn't hurt. And then, if anything, if he's going to go back down, he pulls out his SMG. Instead, he kind of, like, looks around with his SMG. And then he pulls out... I mean, I think he has Anthon or Taped Grip, so he pulls it out quickly. But that, that little difference of him, like, having the NZ out a second earlier, he potentially kills this guy a little quicker, and he doesn't even get knocked here. Like, there's always a world where he kills this guy quicker, this guy starts shooting him, and he backs off in time. So, like, something super small, um, but it's not a big deal. I mean, it, it is and it isn't. I think he's going to get the self off here. Yep, pops a stim. Yep, pops a stim just in case, you know, because you are one shot. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Pop the stim, you know, just to guarantee the heal and, you know, you survive. Re oh, he has tempered on because he grabbed a second Lodi. Repeaks, put some shots. Now, the zone is rotating into the middle, so he's slowly, like, here, he's just slowly worked the right. He can, if he's playing for kills, he can hold them, kind of. He can kind of play for the hold. I like this, kind of get a, some more high ground again. And uh, high ground is so big, even if it's, like, a little bit of a high ground. Something like this. It's, like, actually game-changing, like, how important high ground is. And I'll say this, at a, at a high KD, like, a lot of the best players in the world you watch, a lot of them play for the high ground. Uh, they will play for higher areas on, a, on the map, little things like this. And you can see it's just easy for him. He has a head glitch. He has a high ground. He's able to kill those two guys. Uh, NZ41 and his shot and just the, 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 just the positioning just makes it look very easy. Um, two guys left. I, I believe it's a 4v2 here. And at this point, it should be GG's. The big game bounty is saying it's down low. So they have the high ground once again. Enemy spotted. Oh my god. That guy's beaming. Nice shots from him. Precision incoming. 
He's going to move. He moved just in time. So I, I like doing that sometimes too. Like people panic sometimes and it, it works for me because I do it to people. But like you precision or cluster area, you don't have to be like, oh my God, I have to run away now. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can stay here. You see precision air strike incoming, but he still stays, goes for the reach out, kind of stays just for an extra two seconds. Then he runs. You have to understand there is a little bit of a skill gap. I know that seems scary and it's like in your face and you, you understand that you're, you know, you could potentially die. But you have to understand that there is a little bit of time to work with. And that little time can be all the difference as it was there. He's, he stays there for an extra second. He reach outs, even though he sees the precision coming. He gets a knock and then he goes. So something super small. But I do feel like I do that a lot to people where I'll streak them to back them off. And a lot of times they back off immediately. When realistically they could stay for a second or two and probably kill me. Or, you know, be, put myself in a really bad position. So something to just really note. Um, it's still a 3v2 situation. I guess the guy must have self res or he probably res them. I like this little PDS play here to get the, uh, like, a wider angle. And the zone's going to pull in either way. But he just gets here early. Nice little cheeky play from him. Got down below. Wow. I wouldn't... <laughs> this is really reckless. So, luckily, he had help from his teammate. He uh, Again, something super small. But I would like to point that out. Um, a lot of times, you know, people get panic and try to engage, right like, immediately, right? I like the fact that he 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 keeps running oh, like wide on him. So basically making his opponent still like if he would have stood still and fought, the guy's already kind of looking at him. All he has to do is shoot. But the fact that he kept like moving wide for a little for a couple seconds and made his opponent still continue to like uh snap on him. And uh he goes for the reach out with the NZ41 with the bunny hop. I mean, nice little ego chow there. Um, not the baddest play, but if the player is really good, he definitely can punish him. Stims goes for the wide slide and gets the kill. Um, just really textbook stuff, you know, played it really well. There was maybe like two or three like kind of bad mistakes, but overall, like he played it really well, gets a 20 kill win. And again, the gun skill with some of these players, like I said, are are good, you know. But let's move on to the next game. You can tell from the first game, his gun skill is obviously really good. His movement is good. And and I try to tell people, because I've noticed when I play against 2KDs or around that level, like they're they're good players. I think it's more than that, you know, that really uh separates a 2K, like a 2KD and a 5KD. And uh, it's just the little things, it's the extra things, it's the positioning, it's the repositioning, it's 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 the outplay, it's the, it's the outplay in the middle, you know. I like the fact that he taps there, something super small, but like you see when he full, went full auto, he really didn't hit the second guy, maybe with one bullet, I don't even think he hit him. But I really like that he lines it up and he just tap, 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 and he's able to get to break that guy's plates, which is it's, it's, good, it's a good little thing to note, but... Right here, Lighthouse is very hard to get kills or do anything. So I would I would like to see him back up here and just get out of this area because you're not going to do much here unless you have like a streak. Um, so he's going to back off. I guess he's going to, yep, good play. Back off. Maybe maybe try to find some other people. Yeah, this area is just horrible. One, contracts are really good, okay? I, I feel like at a high level, everyone grabs contract. I'm a big contract grabber. I grab them. I grab multiple contracts a game. But I really like this, like... If it's, especially if it's in your way and it's on the way, grab it, especially, and especially something like a bounty. You see, he, he's like, oh, bounty's here. Let me grab this. A bounty is going to, one, get, it's like a mini UAV. It gives you a target to work with. You know where an enemy is. You know where a potential team is, because usually there's people around that guy. And three, it's going to give you money. The money stacks, the money multipliers when you as you continue to get contracts. And that's going to lead, that's going to be basically a snowball effect. Your team's going to have more money. You're going to have more money. You're going to allow to pop more UAVs, potentially another loadout if you need it. And it's just like contracts are so huge, but people don't abuse them as much as they should be. And ironically enough, I feel like the newbies of the noobs do a lot of contracts. And the really good players do a lot of contracts. But usually in the middle, they I feel like I never see a lot of players in the middle grab contracts as much. Usually, you know, that 1KD, like something something between there don't really grab as much. And now people are going to say, I grab contract. Listen, I'm sure some of you guys do, but it just feels that way. Um, Nice little snapper over that guy. He, I guess he heard him flying over him. He's going to pop the stim. This goes back to what I was saying. Um, It's not necessarily a bad thing. He, he hears him flying, gets a snap, cracks him. Um he he could sprint here for one more second but to kind of utilize the full you know the full potential of the stem but he's just going to stem right away it's not a bad thing because he he is nearby so he's able to hunt him down um i guess he's chasing this guy down you know really trying to hunt him down get this kill throw a knife miss but still gets the kill radar jammer in play so you can't really see where the other guys are but 
you know he has you know he's doing a good job here so right here he obviously sees the Lodi come in bounty down low he, i think he saw someone in front of him but he decides to ignore him because this is like put easy kills usually you have free kills of people if a loadout just dropped you see like how there's just people on this loadout sitting ducks is free kills so something I, I do a lot is I never really go for a second knock, especially it depends in the area, depends on the situation. But you see like he's going to knock this guy and you already see them squirming away, right? Like this guy went right. This guy's about to get a good away in time. There's no way he's going to be able to kill that guy in time. I would rather him commit to this fight, okay? Get, get the kill. Get the kill. Reload. Take your time. Walk away. You get a kill. You can work to other people. They're going to ping on the map. But you he kind of like this guy's potentially going to stay alive right here. As soon as he gets shot at, he should be immediately in his head, either shooting or if he really wants to utilize the blitz in the way he does here, he should pull it out right away. Instead, he goes for a sprint. He kind of kind of he kind of gets in his face and then he pulls his then he swaps and tries to like strafe wide, which is what I talked about the first game. He kind of does that wide strafe, which can be really good. And then he goes for a wide slide, but he's just too weak at that point. He he literally had full health, but he was just too weak. Okay, he should have, this should have been like a very quick little, little motion. He should have immediately kind of like, instead of running at him, one, he could have maybe slid into him while swapping or just like try to just wide, wide slide, wide to the right while his Blixen is coming out immediately. And he probably would have killed him. Instead, he got pistol, you know, free death. So he's going to, I guess his teammates probably clear, cleaned up the kill. He's going to go for his loot again. Again, it's usually load out your loot, your opponent's loot, or if all that three is chalked, you usually just try to find some floor loot somewhere. Um, he's going to be able to get his guns here, hits the reload, hits the plates. Kind of a death that could have been avoided, but it kind of is what it is situation. Um, spots a guy in front of him. He has a clock. I guess he wants to finish the clock. I like that wide strafe he does there. Um, something, again, something you guys need to understand. He doesn't fully commit to the sprint. He just wide strafes for a second here. So he spots the guy go inside. Instead of just like kind of sprinting ahead, um, he plays a wide angle here. So he slides wide. Now he can kind of see inside. He can see if the guy runs outside. And he, if this guy runs outside to him, he's kind of playing like an off angle. Where so if he's kind of playing straight up, this guy could potentially just cut in or like uh, kind of like maybe shoulder and go back in. So this gives him the best chance of killing this kill. If this guy has guns, you know, even if this guy, because I think this guy has like floor loot. Even if this guy doesn't have guns, um, you know, he's going to kill him still. Because just because off angle, I like this. He gets stunned immediately. He sees the sun coming from this side of the ramp, and he's not going to waste time. He's going to start moving his 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 crosshairs and his his aim to the right, getting ready for this engagement here. Does he wins this? And I like the fact that he starts shooting before he sees the enemy. He does not wait to be on the enemy to shoot. He starts letting go of that trigger because basically once he locks on the enemy, eventually, which he will. The shot's already coming out, so he doesn't have to shoot. So it saves him that half a second, uh, you know, milliseconds, whatever. Oh my god, he gets the kill. And he gets the full here. Yup, just good plays there. Just really good reaction, good, good, uh, just awareness and gameplay there. And Snoop Dogg invited him. Sheesh, guys, it must be a movie star. So here he's just kind of hovering with his teammates. Um, they're just running around. He could buy something here, but he doesn't have oh, guy comes in flying in, free kill with the NZ41. The pinks pinks two guys on the castle in front of him so he's gonna kind of like centered on it trying to find a guy um uh, something really small but i feel like i should still just uh, talk about it because this is the, this is the realistic um things about fortress keep and rebirth so he kills that guy fools him usually fools are good because they give you the information of where his teammates are so i like the fact that he fools him right away um you see here on the mini map there's a guy there's a guy up top and there's a guy down low so we can all agree the guy down low is probably in the basement level because he's kind of high up in the media in the middle level and this guy top has to be all the way up top. So I like the fact that he slides wide here and he centers top ready for this guy to peek. Nice little pre-aim here for a couple seconds. If this guy, if this guy peaks high, he probably kills him. Shoots this guy, I guess, for fun. I mean, I've done it before, but probably, <laughs> probably a waste of time. But this is just like good, good awareness. This guy's going to slide in. This guy, he just joined that kill. That's a, that's a yoink right there. He just stole that from his teammates. <laughs> um, he's going to go with a nice little center on this guy. I think this guy was looking at him earlier, but he just wasn't really paying attention. Must have been focused on something else here. Yeah, because right here, you see, he peek, he jumps up. And I, it looks like he knows he's there because he, he backs up like he's going to run away. But then he sees him again. He doesn't really react to it. I don't know if he's like focused on a guy to his left or, you know, he was a little distracted. But he seemed like he was a little distracted because this guy's like, popping up like a sore thumb um he, he you know he nice little resnap though there he got he did get hit he's getting shot on the side 
I like the fact that you got to So this is like a, a weird situation. Usually when you get pancakes, when you get a sandwich, you got to find a spot, a way to plate up and, you know, stay alive between the two two people. Um, obviously, the guy on the left is kind of his teammates are helping them uh, on the guy on the left. So he's just kind of focusing to stay down from the guys on the right. Uh, goes for a world star throwing knife. Uh, he hears multiple people up here. I like this play. Okay, so this is something really good to, to know. And I want you guys to understand. The element of surprise is your best friend when it comes to team wipes, okay? It's your best friend when it comes to 1v2s, 1v3s, 1v4s. When you're soloing a squad, whether it's a couple or, you know, two guys, your element of surprise is your best friend. I like the fact that he doesn't fully sprint and just gives away his location. If they know he's here, he is dead by the time he goes up the stairs. But the fact that he's crouching, is taking his time to crawl up, it gives him the best chance. So right here, this guy actually gets him weak. Oh, no, he's getting shot on the right. He tries to run away and disengage. Not, he just can't do it in time. So he obviously hears multiple people top. He knows there's there's at least two guys up here. We all can agree there's at least two. There's shots, multiple shots, multiple footsteps. So this this is nothing really bad. This guy just makes a good play to you know back up, plate up, and kind of like look down the stairs. Uh, he basically breaks this guy's plates here. So a lot of times when you break someone's plates and get them really weak, that guy's usually gonna disengage. This guy's not gonna just run up the stairs and challenge him, right? We can all agree to that. Usually they're gonna disengage. So, and two, he just dropped on the stairs. So no matter what, he has like about a second or two to work with. So right here, he gets greedy and kind of fully commits to the, to the fight to chase him down. But this right side of the screen, this corner area, is he has no idea if someone is there. I always check both sides. He has no, no idea if someone's there. This guy could easily get shoot him in the side, which happens. I would rather him get knock this guy immediately. Reaction, good, good game awareness. You know, like we said, we know there's multiple top. Check that side. Knock, I broke this guy's plates. Let me check to my right. Boom. He checks the guy to the right. This guy has no plate. He had like one plate on. He was like half health. This He would have killed that guy so easily. Bam. He's dead. Full kill him. Ping. Chase the other guy. Or even turn around in case this guy pushes him. You know, ego chows him. Bam. Dead. Instead, he like tunnels really hard on this guy. And this guy kind of gets a free kill on him. This guy actually does end up regaging a second later. But I really felt like he could have he could have knocked this guy. You know, shot this guy. And then she snapped on the other guy and killed them both. He had he had the time to work with. Um, something super, it's like small, but it is it. It's just like really on. You have to be like super fast on these things. So here he's going to get rest. He's going to realize his loot is chalked. He definitely shouldn't have gone for that at all. I don't know how he survives here. He actually survives and he's going to go for his loadout. Now, again, you know, people try to get you. You try to get your loot and then you try to get your loadout. Um, he has no plates. He, this is like a lose-lose situation. You never want to push the other team when you have no plates. You know, it's usually a lose-lose. Like, if there's multiple people there, you have no plates. It's it's only if you must have to. I really like that he backs up here Um, for two reasons. One, he needs plates, right? He needs ammo, but he, most importantly, he needs plates. He has a, he has the, the thing on sale, so he can buy plates. But he actually finds plates here, which is nice. He, maybe he buys some here. I don't know what he's planning to do. He has plates to work with. He doesn't really need to buy any if you, unless he really wants to uh, stock up. Yeah, he buys a self instead. That's fine. Uh, I like that. Something super small, but you know, can make a difference here. Uh, maybe, maybe not rush that situation right there. Again, something a little bit small, but right here, like he can kind of sit in behind this wall right here, kind of, kind of look at this area for a second or two because he has a little time to work with, and he has a gas mask. Uh, but instead, like, I mean, this guy doesn't peek off for another second or later, but. I would rather him even like something super small as as being centered over there to the left and not really looking at his right because the chances of shooting someone shooting him from the right are very low. Um, little to, little things, but you know I think it makes a difference. Uh, something I would have done for sure. So his teammates are fighting these guys. He's gonna go ahead on push. This game for sure it's more it's more team oriented. Nice snap on this guy. Shoots his body. Shows him what's up for camping up here. Ah, the rest comes in, pops a stim for the immediate chase. He probably thought he was going to knock him, gets the kill, spots the people and keep. So here's multiple people in, on him on keep. They're, they're, it seems like they're all the way up top. As he's trying to find a way to fight them without having to commit to the top. His teammate, two of his teammates get knocked. He hears them on him. Keep is weird. Like It feels like they're on top of you, they're bottom... So something super small on this map, when he's going up these stairs, what I do is I center in the middle. I don't center for a fight on the staircase. 
Because the thing is, when you're going up these stairs, you see how he looks like kind of high at this, in, in this situation right here. You see how you can see like the top part of the stairs over here. So when, when you kind of center a little higher, when you're climbing up these stairs, you can kind of see the second level. So if a guy's kind of waiting for you, you can see him. And I always kill that guy. You see how he like, it's good centering technically, but the fact that they're very open, if a guy's up top, he can easily just shoot him coming up or like get him one shot or maybe even get the kill. So usually you want to center a little higher instead of the stairs, spots this guy, cracks this guy. I like the fact that he disengages here. He doesn't fully commit to it. Um, decides to get the high ground, which is nice. Good play. Um, you know, a lot of times when we fight, when we shoot someone, and it's like what we talked about before, you kind of people like are very hungry to go for that kill. And but sometimes it's not a good play. He's gonna shot out here. He's gonna run away and play it up. Disengage. Nice little spot he found here. Shoulder as he's planing up. Something very small, but I love that he did this, and I want to talk about this is the fact that he's planning up but he's still being useful he's still being uh proactive with what he's doing he's planning up and he's hitting shoulders here this is what you call a shoulder it's when you go back in and out in and out and he and he's and he's planning up and he's also getting information so if someone pushes him right now he, he already knows that and he sees them so it's just something very small but it's really good to do especially at a higher level uh you you will come to realize how important it is it's a dead silence here which can come and play he kind of pre-pops this. I mean, there are people on him, so it's not really necessarily a bad play. He's going to use it aggressively. Um, but I like the fact that he earlier he disengaged, you know, when he fought one guy. Uh, knowing there's probably multiple. I like the fact that he goes for the high ground again. And it's what I tell you guys all the time. High ground is king. I like the fact that he doesn't fully commit to the, uh, going all the way to the top there. He looks around for somebody. And now he kind of hears people under him. He's going to go for a wide left rotation instead of rotating through the middle, knowing there's people on him. And I guess he's going to kind of play for these guys because he knows he can kind of hold them in here and get the kills. Nice shots. Kill gets stolen. Advanced UAV. Oh, you hate to hear that. He's just going to play it up. Just be fully plated. Oh my God. There's two guys on him. I like the finesse. I like the movement. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Some of you guys are scared to be in the gas. You know, you, you know, especially when you have a gas mask or even no gas mask. You guys fear the gas. B, it's okay to be in the gas. It's actually going to save your life or get your kills more than you expect. Um, I like the fact that here's people on him. He's going to pull out his Blixen right, his Blixen right away, understanding that he's going to get in a close quarter in combat. It goes back to what I've said before. He's already on top of it. He's being proactive. He's, he's understanding that this gun is going to be more beneficial in this situation. So he spots this guy. I love the fact that he complete. He immediately he's wide. He wide slides. He slides wide. Basically does a slide cancel. Hits some shots on him. But then he's gonna spot the second guy, right? And I'm sure he's gonna disengage immediately here. Yep, disengages. Good plays. This is like really good gun skill. Really good awareness. Um, he's gonna go under him. Gas mask in. He's gonna he's gonna disengage again. And I like that he's playing around in the gas. He's like going left, right, left, putting shots. Push shots here, knocks the first guy, and does what he did previously on the first map. Knocks the first guy, immediately, you know, goes left and re him on the left. But a slight cancel, and basically cameras both these guys. Uh, gets the kill, ping down low here, so there's one guy there. But I really like just the in-game awareness, you know, the gun skill there. And you can see, like, a lot of stuff he's doing right. Um, I don't know, I don't know about completely chasing this guy. <laughs> At this point, I felt like he wanted kills. But he knows this guy's one shot. He's going to commit to this guy. Goes for the Eagle Child right away. So this is something like very small. Uh, I mean, these guys could have been easily on the same team. And a lot of times what happens is I like that he strafes wide, kind of ignores this guy, fully shoots this guy, even though this guy was kind of shooting at him. So like, unless he was kind of, you know, faded. Um, but I like the fact that he immediately, this guy could be easily on the same team. This guy could be like, oh, I got to go help my teammate. He's full sprinting. And if he, if he slides this wide, he catches him off guard, which he kind of does. But the guy wasn't on the same team. It, it, so it, it seems like so he doesn't really commit to it because it's well i think wait is it two solos oh my god and that's a crazy finish right there so right here is just like good in-game awareness good gunny i mean he spots the guy i'm pretty sure on the left there so he goes for the snap on him he saw his head when he was full going this guy immediately slaps snaps on this guy on the left knowing the guy on the right is back down and then he just goes back down to the right and full kills him and uh, uh, that was the same team. So I really like the, the play style right there. Just aggressive and very snappy. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. This is my first time really breaking down someone's gameplay, especially in Warzone. But if it's something you like, it's something I definitely can improve on and, you know, continue to get better. Just let me know in the comments below. I could for sure do some more of these. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.